I work with an organization in Uganda, and we run about 367 churches. And um, a few years back, I was over here. We lost uh, a, a part of our leadership in a very terrible accident. So that's how I became the leader over the organization. So six, 367 churches. And uh, we average 200 people every church. So every week we are able to reach about 10,000 people all over Uganda. And uh, the organization owns 24 schools, primary schools. You call them elementary schools. We call them primary schools. We average 200 kids in each school. And uh, so every week we are able to reach out to almost 5,000 5, kids. And that may not sound like much in a nation that's the size of the state of Oregon with 45 million people. But God is moving. Yeah. And God is doing amazing things. So um, I'm proud to be part of the leadership back in Uganda and uh, to, to lead all those pastors. And um, I hope you get an, an opportunity one day to travel with one of the teams coming to Uganda to see what God is doing. Sometimes when you stay where you are and all you see is your TV and you hear all this stuff that happening around you, you think the world is, is ending tomorrow. But I want to give you good news. Jesus is, doing, is building his kingdom. And um, I want to read a scripture for you in, um, in the book of Daniel. Let's dig into the word of God. How many people believe we should be reading our Bibles every Sunday? Especially every Sunday. It's a good day to read your Bible. In Daniel chapter 7 and verse 13, 13 and 14, the Bible says, I continue watching in the, in the night visions and suddenly one like a son of man was coming with the crowds of heaven. He appeared, he approached the ancient of days and was escorted before him. He was given dominion and glory and the kingdom that those of every people, nation, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting king, dominion that will never pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. In Matthew Chapter 28 and verse 18. The Bible says, Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all every, everything I have commanded you. I remember I am with you always to the end of the age. I want to tie those two scriptures for you. In the first scripture, the prophet Daniel has, is having a series of, uh, of, of, of dreams. This is a prophet that prophesied through dreams. He would go to bed and have these dreams. And mainly his dreams were about the end times and kingdoms and dominions. And so among the dream that he saw, he saw many kingdoms that came and went and disappeared. If you read the book of Daniel, I know you've been studying through the Bible and you are in the book of Revelation. What you read in the book of Daniel, you also find in the book of Revelation. And so Daniel sees this one vision, this one particular vision. He sees one that looks like a son of man, a son of God, descending from heaven. And he came, and all the people, tribes and nations, came together to serve him. And he had a kingdom that is not one of those kingdoms Daniel had seen that come and go. His kingdom and his dominion had come to stay. And that's the kingdom you and I belong to. And so in, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, after the resurrection, remember we had the celebration of uh, Easter a few weeks back. And uh, Jesus has just come out of the grave. And he stands and he says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
the first king ever, the first man ever to stand on earth and declare that all authority and all dominion and power have been given to me. There have never been any world leader that said such, made such a statement. I know many kings and presidents and dictators. We've had a few dictators in Uganda that have tried to conquer the world and establish themselves as everlasting kingdom, but they just last for a moment and they are gone. But Jesus stands up and makes a statement, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he turns to his disciples and tells them, go therefore. Mark says, in my name. I say, go therefore to all the nations and make them disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And so the word that, um, the dream that Daniel saw, Jesus fulfills in Matthew 28. And that there, right there, the kingdom begins. And that kingdom has been expanding for the last 2,000 years. And Jesus came to establish his kingdom among another kingdom. So he sent the disciples all over the world. And you have to remember the disciples were just a bunch of, uh, some of them were losers, some of them were fishermen. They've, they've never been anywhere. They included Peter, all, of all people. Peter who had just denied Jesus a, a few days back. Uh, Jesus put him together with the disciples and told them, go in my name all over the world. Not just to your villages, not only to your cities, but go to all the nations and make them disciples. And so, here we are 2,000 years later. We belong to a kingdom that will never pass away. But in the many, in the, in the recent times, the church seems to have taken a backstage on many fronts that we should be occupying. And um, having come here, I've been coming here to your nation for the last 20, 25 years. And I remember when I first came here in uh, 1997, I remember the churches I visited Every church had a missionary. Every church has a mission department and people were going out on missions. You hear, in then, during, during the 90s and the early 2000s, the U.S. church was the most sending, missionary sending church all over the world. And you had the mission on every corner, all over Africa, Asia, everywhere you had churches doing missions. But I've watched as the years have gone, and the church in the U.S. has taken a backstage from the world, from doing missions. And the moment the church in the U.S. started doing that, even your military started pulling out of other nations. And you may never know what that means to us who live in other nations. But you need to understand that God in every season and times chooses a people, a nation that he uses to build his kingdom. And U.S., the United States, has been one of those nations in, many, in the recent years that the Lord appointed, anointed to send out to build his kingdom all over the world. And so I believe we are seeing a change of seasons. And God is about to do something new. The darkness in your cities, in your nations is very alarming. I don't have to see it. I don't have to... To read about it, I feel it when I come through your streets. I feel the darkness that's trying to take over your nation. And as an African, uh, a person that I've known, friends, families here, I feel very concerned for what's happening in the, in the U.S. And it's very, very easy to stand in fear and say, we are done. We should close shop and go home. But today I stand here to bring you good news. Right from the scriptures you have just read, what Daniel saw, it had a beginning that had no end. And when Jesus stands up in Matthew 28 and he says, all authority has been given to me. You need to understand 
He's not just talking as uh, just someone. He's talking as he's giving a, 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 a statement as a military general. Someone who has just conquered the territory. And now he's giving a command to his disciples. And he said, you know what? I have done what I needed to do. And the rest is easy for you. I leave you the easy job. You go and finish it. This morning I woke up and was, was listening to a song that says, I'm fighting a battle that you have already won. And that's why we should not be living in fear. I believe we live in such a time as this that the Lord is getting ready to do something that the world has never seen. But my concern as I stand in your pulpit is that many of us are not aware of what God is doing or what God is about to do. Because if God is going to do anything in the United States, he works with people and he uses people. And you and I, we need to use this time to get ready for the next move of God. What God is about to do, not only here in the U.S., but all over the nation, we need to understand that we are the, nation, we are the generation that is going to use. It's not over yet. It's just beginning. I said it's not over, it's just beginning. The reason why we exist as a church is to expand and build the kingdom. And this kingdom has no end. It must increase. The Bible says the increase of this kingdom has no end. And so the reason why we exist as OCC, as overcomers, as, for this one reason, to expand and build the kingdom of God. The reason why to you belong to a, a congregation like this is because the Lord has appointed you for such a time as this to build his kingdom. And so Jesus stands as a, a military general and gives a command to his disciples and say, tell them, go and make disciples. Again, in, in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, but you'll be endued with power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then you be my disciples. You be my witnesses. He told them, he told them in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And he, but he says to them, you receive power. And so we all have read the, the, the book of Acts and we know that in, in, in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit has come upon those disciples, in a moment like this, after they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they turn into being just disciples and they became apostles. And they went from that room, they went in as disciples, they left as apostles, anointed, empowered to go out and preach the gospel. And if you read the book of Acts, you also understand what we are about to witness even in our times. When we are empowered, coming out of the upper room, go out anointed. What God is about to do with the church, with us, with our generation, is going to be very, very amazing. I feel like we are in the days of the book of First Kings and Second Kings. The nation of Israel backslid totally into darkness. And they brought in other idols and they called them gods. And God raised a man called Elijah. And he, he came and appeared to the king and said, I want you to gather me the whole nation on the mountain. And today we are going to decide who is God. And the whole nation came together on this particular day. Because we are so confused. There was so much darkness. There was so much confusion when the nation backslide, when people backslide and walk away from God. You cannot Im imagine the darkness that cover communities. And, and, and so it happened in the days of Elijah. There was so much darkness because they had departed from the living God and they sought to serve other idols. And the Lord lifted up a man called Elijah. And he came and said, today, this particular day, we must decide who is God. I feel like we are in those days and I feel like the Lord is setting the stage for the church. But the question is, Elijah, are you ready? Are you ready? Because you must come out and you must prove that God 
is the only God who answers by fire. And I feel like we are in the days of Daniel again when he lived in the territory of Babylon and there was a a territory of darkness, over a thousand goats, witchcraft everywhere. There was confusion, all kinds of, of evil and wickedness going on. And one day the king rose up and said, I'm going to raise up a statue and all of you are going to bow down and worship this one thing. And you call it God your creator. And three boys, Shadrach, Mesach, and Abednego, they refused. They stood out. And they they, they were brought before the king. This is what is going to happen, people. The stage is being set. I hear what goes, what's going on in your states, uh, in your state here, and I'm, I'm, I'm very, very sure. The next stage is going to require people who have such a faith at Sadraj, Mesach, and Abednego. They refused. The sound, the, the, the trumpet went on, and Sadraj and Mesach refused to bow there. They said, we, we, have, we know who we serve. We have a living God. We know his name. We will not bow down to an idol. And they, they were brought before the king, and the king told them, do you know what this means? Do you know this is going to cost your life? I'm going to kill you right now. And I like what they answered. And they said, we know you own all the power, you possess all the power to kill us, but you also need to understand the God we serve is able to save us. How many people believe that the Lord we serve is able to save us? But he also added on and said, but even if he does not, that's the kind of faith you really need in this time. Even if he doesn't, because there is the possibility that he won't. That's the kind of faith we need to grow in this moment. Fearless faith. Even if he doesn't, I won't. That's where we are people. That's where the church has come. And I believe that's why your pastors, your leaders stand here every day and encourage you to fellowship, read your Bible, Pray, you are getting ready. A time of getting ready will soon be over and it will be time for action. And you need to back on what you've learned in the past. You need to back on the faith that you've been building over the years. If you don't get ready right now, there will be a time, there will be no time for you to, to, to learn nothing. You need, this is a time for you to dig deeper in the word of God, in prayer. In, in seeking God and hearing his voice and getting your, your faith strong. Because these guys, when the time came, they stood up. And the king said, I'm going to throw you in the furnace. And he did. And what came out of that furnace, the whole nation, the whole nation got saved. Because the Bible says they went in the fire and there was the fourth one. And the king saw the fourth one. And he woke up and said, didn't we throw three men in the fire? But I see a fourth one. He looks like a son of man. And he called them out and they came out. And he himself made a statement from this day forth. If you are found in the United States worshiping another God beside Jehovah, you will be killed, you and your house. The whole nation got saved. Instantly from darkness to light. It's going to happen, people. I do have so much faith that our, our nation's about to turn around because God is on the throne and his kingdom will never pass away. I don't care who opposes the, king, the, the kingdom. I don't care what laws they make in the, in, in the states. I don't care who is president. The kingdom of our God will never pass away, will never be destroyed. I feel like we are in the book of Esther. Woo! Exciting. A guy raises up, I think his name is Haman, and he's, he was so evil. He hated the people of God. He said, I'm going to kill you all. I'm going to kill you. 
And the Bible says these people were scattered all over the empire. But this guy came with, with a sinister plan to execute every Jewish person. Amen. And what he didn't know that his plan was the leading of God. So he can bring a day where he can put his people up on, on another level. And so the Lord raises up Esther, a little girl, a homeless girl. The uncle was a homeless guy. They grew up on the streets. But God raises up Esther and she becomes a queen in a fallen country. And then immediately when she becomes a king, this guy comes up with a plan. I'm going to kill the Jews. And I don't know why people hate others, but he had no reason to hate them. But he did, and he got the papers, he got everything legal written down, and he set the date and he said, I'm going to kill them. And it was told to Esther that your people are about to be killed. And Esther was like, I can't do anything. And Mordecai was like, if you don't rise now and do something, who knows that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? And she got ready. She fasted. The Bible says, I, I, I'm going to fast. And I like when, uh, what she said. She said, it's not my turn to go to the king because they had a law in the empire. If you went in the, in the palace, even if you were the queen, if you were uninvited, you'll be, you'll be dead. He will kill you, even if you are his wife. That's the, the Persian law. They are stupid law. Is, uh, if, you can't, if the king has not invited you and you show up unannounced, you are going to be killed. And Esther knew that. And he said, pray for me, I'll go in. If I perish, I perish. I pray for you for such a faith that if I perish, I perish. There's a possibility, people. You read church history, people have died for what they believe. And I, I believe the greatest undoing of our time is that the church lives in fear. We are so scared of governments, of laws, of staff around us. We are so scared. But the Lord is bringing us to this place. If I perish, I perish. The Bible says she went in. And you know what the king said? Ask of anything. Up to a half of the kingdom. And I'll give it to you. That's what favor does. It's coming upon you in Jesus' name. And she went in and said, I just want you to come to a party. And he came and said, can you come back tomorrow? And he did. And this is a busy king with a lot of work to do, a busy guy. But he came and the third time, Esther was like, I need to ask a favor today. I need you to understand that my people are about to be killed. They've been making all these laws and putting them in the constitution and pushing our children to do stuff that were not meant for our kids. And they are telling our children to do this and that. And, Esther, and the king was like, who is this man? I said, this man right here. And, and the Bible says that the, the, the king immediately said, execute him. And then Esther, Mordecai, the guy that had been at the king's gate came in and became the prime minister immediately and took over the evil man's place. That's what God is going to do with the church people. God is moving. I believe these are exciting times. But we need to, 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 to get ready in this season. When things are not going our way, when nothing much is happening, that's a time for you to get ready. When, when you think that, that, that nothing is working for you, it's God slowing you down. It's going, God slowing the church down, telling us, people, I want you to hide for a moment. I'm going to teach you things. I'm going to show you things. I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to give you direction. I'm drawing a plan for you, and you need to have a plan on paper. So when the time comes for you, you'll be, you'll be ready to go out in D.C., in the capital, in the streets, wherever I will send you. And then you will go in my power. This is what the 12 disciples did who became apostles. They left the upper room and scattered themselves all over the world. They preached the gospel, including Peter. 
Peter denied Jesus three times. But the Bible says, but when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and guess who stood up to speak for the others? Peter he did and in one day, 3,000 people. Then he went from 120 in one day to 3,000 people. And a few days later in chapter 5 of Acts, the Bible says 5,000. In just a few, six months, they had a church that was, was running about 10,000 people. The power of the Holy Ghost. That's what God can do when the season has come. And they went, the Bible says they went everywhere preaching the gospel. And God added unto them those who were being born again. I can tell you stories from Africa. of What we have seen this power do. The gospel is the power of God to save. The other undoing of the American church has been to take these things so lightly that we think, oh, just, just going out. But you need to understand, when Jesus stood up in Matthew 28 and said, all authority has been given to me, he was also declaring himself as a king within another kingdom. And so for, you, for, for us to assume that we would just walk over and take over the territory is, is that's a, one of the deceit of the enemy. We need to understand this is a war. This is a war, people. We are fighting. The Bible says in, in Ephesians six twelve that we do not wrestle with blood, with flesh and blood, but with the powers of darkness. And I, and I believe over the years, the, the, the church, in, not only in the U.S., we've forgotten that part, that this is a war. This is a battle. We are fighting, people. We are fighting. We should be fighting. And we are not dealing with flesh and blood. So all these things going on in the state capitals, in the D.C., all over the world, coming from the government, is not just people sitting, a bunch of people sitting and decide, oh, well, there will be no Bible in this school. Oh, stop praying here. No. There are demonic forces behind every decision these guys are making. And for you, you need to understand that we do not just petition them on paper and say, oh, stop that. Please do not that. You've got to encounter them with the power they've been given, the power of the Holy Ghost. If Jesus is king, that means you are a soldier in the army. I know a soldier is given a gun just to go to a restaurant and just have lunch. Guns are for fighting, my friend. And so I, I feel like the, the church has forgotten this part of our, of, our, of, our, of, our, of our living. We think that, oh, we, 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 just, we, we just write a letter to them and tell them we don't like that and they will take it away. They don't because the God, whoever they serve is, is, is more powerful than them. And we need to understand that the war we are fighting has been already won. And he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. You need to understand that everywhere, everywhere we walk, we are already champions. And so that's why I do not live in fear. I, I remember in 1998 going back from here and I went back to the village of Masulita. It was dark. It was so dark. There was so much evil. There was so much evil, you could even feel it in your skin. And I, we went back, and me and my wife, and we didn't know what to do, but all we knew was we knew how to preach the gospel. We knew how to pray, and we went in that community, and we started preaching the gospel. And no one was getting saved. We had kids the first six months. All we had were, were kids. And, and, and the Lord has spoken to us and told us, if you go, I'll give you a big harvest. But there was no harvest in the first year. So we started praying and fasting. I remember dreaming a dream in the night. And I, had a, I was standing be, be outside the city. And the city was in iron gates. It, there was such a war around the city. I could hear the people, but I could not see the people. 
And someone who was talking to, to me in the dream told me, you need to break the wall. For you to get those people out, you need to break the wall. And I didn't know how to break the wall, but you told me you need to continue praying and commanding and speaking the word. The, the wall will hear the word. The wall will hear your prayers. The wall will hear you when you worship. You need to use your spiritual weapons. For the Bible says, for our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God. So we, I, I remember telling my wife that we are going to stay in church overnight. And we started staying in church overnight, praying, interceding, praying for souls to be born again. In the second year, remember one Sunday morning, we are all seated in church, about 70 of us. And we saw a group of people coming, about 100 people coming to our church. And there was this guy who was a Catholic, who was, was a Catholic something. He was going to a Catholic church. And that morning, he led a group of his followers and told them we are going to get born again today. And he brought 150 people that very morning. We went from, we went from 70 people to over 200 people in one day because we broke the walls. We comforted the enemy. Let me tell you, OCC, there is a tell your spirit over the, the, the state of Washington. And you are called to bring it down in Jesus' name. And you do have the weapons. And you do have the power and the anointing. You just need to dress yourself up, yourself up and say, in the name of Jesus, we are able to take territory. And so I want you to understand that the great commission in Matthew 28 is a military command to you and to me. We have no choice. We will fight. We will fight for our marriages. We will fight for our children. We will fight for our communities. We will fight for our cities. We will fight for our schools. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We will worship. Recently, the Lord came to us and told us, I'm giving you a weapon. And said, oh Lord, what kind of weapon are you giving us? I said, worship. I'm giving you a weapon of worship. And so we started doing this Worship rallies all over the area. We'll take a few speakers and take the worship team and stand at the corner of the street and just sing worship songs. And the Spirit of the Lord will come. And the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is. When he comes, guess what? who leaves? The enemy leaves. I like what you do on, on Sunday morning, but you've got to take it out of the church. Find a street corner. Get a, a group of people that are willing. Where are the young people? The Lord spoke to us recently. The next revival is going to be led by young people. You need to have your teenagers in the church. You need to do something about the young people and make them come to church. You need to make them leaders. Give them opportunities for them to come and be part of what God is doing. Because the next move of God all over the nation is going to be young people. Last month, in the month of, uh, of uh, March, I led a group of 25 young people. I took them to Zambia another African country. And we went and spent a week in Lusaka, Zambia. And this, I watched these young people sleeping on the floor and going out on the streets. We took them in universities and we started mobilizing a worship rally. We had a worship rally one morning, one full day. And we had about 2,000 young kids coming, students from all of every Lusaka university. We put them in a big, uh, big, uh, big building. And we had a full day worship session. Calling on the name of the Lord and the presence of the Lord came down. And there was deliverance. There was healing. You know, when you worship of a city, even the city opens up. Darkness leaves. That's what the Lord, that's where we are going, people. The Lord is about to do things that we have never seen. But I finish this with this one question. Are you ready? Are you ready? If you're not, you need to get ready. 